today, Father God, which is to bring you, oh God, glory, honor, and praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. I welcome each and every one of you today. Glory be to the God who is joining in today, wherever you're joining us from. You can just put in the comment section where you're joining us from today. Praise God. We welcome you on behalf of Apostle Ron Tolliver. I just want to take this moment to welcome each and every one of you to the Apostolic Fire Leadership Summit. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. The atmosphere is already charged. Praise God. The Holy Spirit is already here. The fire and the anointing of God is already here today. Praise God. Why don't you just take a moment and share this broadcast to your page, share it with others, and invite others to come in and join with us today. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. My assignment today, praise God, is to lead us into prayer. Glory be to God. My assignment today, praise God, is just to lead as the Holy Spirit would lead me today. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. As I was meditating for today, praise God. Hallelujah. The Lord dropped in my heart, in my spirit, two scripture verses today. Praise God. And I just want to share them with you. Glory be to God, because it is the meditation from which this prayer will be led today. Hallelujah. And God led me into Exodus chapter 13 and verses 21 and 22, where God is speaking to us, his people, God is speaking to us, his children, to show that God is with us no matter what the situation or the circumstance may be. God is with us. So God leads his people by day, hallelujah, through a pillar of cloud and by night through a pillar of fire. Glory be to God. We are talking about the apostolic fire, praise God. And don't we all want that fire of God to be resident in us to be resident in us so that we can be glory carriers, that we can be carriers of that fire of God in the name of Jesus. Praise God. And the Lord went before them by day, hallelujah, as a pillar of cloud to lead them by the way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and by night. And verse 22 says, he took not away the pillar of cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. Praise God. You just got to put a mark right to that. He took not away the fire. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. If you have feeling like you have lost the fire of God. Today is the day. You are in the right place at the right time. Glory be to God. The other verse of scripture that the Lord led me to is found in Acts chapter 2 and verse 3. And it says, And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. Praise be to God. We want the fire of God to sit upon us. Glory be to God. We want the fire of God. God to be resident in us. Praise God. We want that fire, praise God, to be burning within us. Glory be to God. And as Jeremiah said, it's like fire shot up in my bone. Praise be to God. So Father, we thank you today. We exalt you, oh God. We glorify you, Father. God, we declare that there is none like you. You are the one true living God. Father, now our God, take full control now, God, as we take charge of of the earwaves now in the name of Jesus. God, we are reminded of your word, Father God, that says, who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in your holy place? God, you said only he that has clean hands and a pure heart, praise God. He who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, praise be to God. So Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, we are asking you, oh God, to allow us to ascend Send into the realm of the spirit. We are allow, asking you, oh God, right now in the name of Jesus, to allow us, oh God, to ascend into the realm of power. God, we are asking you right now in the name of Jesus to release your fire upon us now, God, in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, as we take charge, we take control, oh God, of every demonic territory right now, God. We bring them into subjection and lordship to the Holy Spirit, oh God. We bring them into subjection 
subjection, Lord God, to the fire of God right now in the name of Jesus. Father, our God, we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you for the fire, oh God. We thank you for the power that shall come forth, oh God. We thank you for your presence with us, God, to destroy every yoke and to lift every burden today, Father. God, we thank you as you were with Moses, God. You appeared, appeared as a flame of fire in the bush, God. Lord, we are asking you today in the name of Jesus uh, that you will allow someone today, oh God, to have a divine encounter with you, God. We are asking you, Father, today in the name of Jesus uh, to allow someone today, oh God, to meet you at the place, God, where you can satisfy their needs today, God. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father. Make a way, oh God, today, Lord God, that somebody, oh God, who has been dry, somebody who has been thirsty, oh God, somebody, oh God, who has been out of your presence, God, that today can be the day, God, when you bring them, oh God, to that place, Father God, where, Lord, you can work a miracle in them, where you can do a new thing in them, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. God, we thank you today, God. Lord God, as we ascend, oh God, in the spirit realm today, Father, God, we thank you that we are now, oh God, taking up the position of authority that you have given unto us, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, oh God, that we are now, oh God, taking new territories, that we are now taking new borders, God. We are now taking, oh God, new dimensions today, in the name of Jesus Christ. God, we praise you and we lift you up, God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you, oh God, that Judah has already gone before us, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we send up praises, oh God, on high. We send up praises on high today, Father. God, in Jesus' mighty name, you have your way today, God. You have your divine way today, Father. God, we thank you that this will be, oh God, a day, oh God, of divine impartation. We thank you, oh God, that this will be a day, oh God, of divine, Lord God, and merging, Lord God, of mantles today, Father. We thank you, oh God, that this day, oh God, will be a day, Father God, when there will be strategic alliances, oh God, Father God, all over the globe, your brothers, oh God, to this virtual platform, and we thank you today, God, that your word will come forth with power, your word will come forth with might, your word, oh God, will come forth with precision, your word, oh God, will come forth with clarity, Father, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you today, God, that your word, oh God, will fall on good grounds, your word, oh God, will fall on hearts that are receptive, hearts that are hungry, hearts that are thirsty, oh God. Father God, to receive that new thing from you, God. You said, behold, I do a new thing in you. Shall it not spring forth? God, we thank you that this is the day, God, when it shall spring forth. We thank you today, oh God, that this day, Father God, that visions, Lord God, and dreams, oh God, will be made manifest in your people, oh God, today in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the dreamers. We thank you, oh God, for the builders, oh God. Father, and our God, in the name of Jesus, those who will build that altar, Father, God, where you can pour out your fire, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God, we speak to the spirit of the Elijahs, oh God, that are on this line today, Father. God, as you said in your word, Elijah built an altar, praise God. Not only did he build an altar, praise be the God. Father God, your word declares that he dug trenches. Your word declares, oh God, as he dug the trenches. Father, our God, that was the time that you poured out your spirit, oh God. Father God, we thank you that that is the time, oh God, when you pour out your fire, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Somebody today, Lord God, need a fresh fire. Somebody today, oh God, need a fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost. Somebody today, God, in the name of Jesus, need an awakening, oh God, need a quickening in their spirit, Father. We thank you for releasing your fire, oh God, that will cause us, oh God, hallelujah, Jesus, to be re-energized, oh God, that will cause us, oh God, to be reignited in our spirit, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, to be in a place of readiness, where we can do your work, where we can do your will, oh God, while it is day, Father, because the night cometh when no man can work. So we thank you, oh God, today, 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, we thank you, God, that you are making ways for us today, God. In the name of Jesus, no more will we be hindered, oh God. No more will we be set back, Father, in the name of Jesus. But God, you're causing us to advance in your kingdom. You're causing us, oh God, to advance in that place, oh God. Lord God, we thank you that you're causing us, oh God, to occupy in the mountains that you have called us to, Father. God, right now, in the name of Jesus, we call upon you, oh God, the consuming fire. God, release your fire, oh God, upon every demonic squatters, oh God, that is occupying the mountains, oh God, that you have already called us to occupy. Father, in the name of Jesus, drive them up by your spirit. Drive them out, oh God, by your fire today, God. Destroy the works of the enemy, Father, in the name of Jesus. Destroy the works of darkness, oh God. We bind up every powers of the enemy now, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, that Father, that you will have your way on this line today, God. There will be no interruption in this broadcast, oh God. In the name of Jesus, your people, oh God, will hear your word. Your people, oh God, will hear what you have to say to us today, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. God, we thank you, oh God, that today, Father, we are by your spirit, oh God, revived. We thank you, oh God, that today by your spirit, we are restored. We thank you, God, that by your spirit, we are renewed in our mind, oh God. We are strengthened, God. We are strengthened to advance. We are strengthened to go forward, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, that you are speaking, oh God, to the spirit of the Elijahs. I keep hearing the spirit of Elijahs. Praise be to God. We need the spirit of Elijahs today, God. In the name of Jesus, we need it in the earth today, oh God, to stand up by Katarabo Shando. Yes, God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, oh God, that they are emerging, God, by your spirit, oh God. Leaders are emerging, God, in the name of Jesus. No more, oh God, will we sit by, Father, no, oh God, waiting for man to validate when God, you've already sent us to go forward, God, with your word. You've already sent us to go forward with your will. You've already sent us to go forward with your power, God, to take charge of authorities, oh God, to take regions, oh God, to take back everything that the enemy has stolen from us, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, God. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 The atmosphere is charged. My God, I sense a move of God today. God is up to something all across the nation. I know that sometimes we're looking at everything else but God, but I want you today to get in the right posture. I need you in a prophetic posture. I need you in an apostolic posture. I need you ready to advance the kingdom like never before. I need you to be vertically aligned with God today. I, I know that CNN is saying this, Fox News is saying this, CNBC is saying this, BBC is saying this, but I need you to know what God is saying to you in this particular moment in particular time I'm calling for the sons of Issachar that are in tune with the times and the seasons expect fire in your belly to be ignited some of you come here for an impartation today some of you come here to be shifted again some of you need to be pushed to a higher dimension some of you some of you have been in a place of stagnation and procrastination but I hear the Lord saying I'm sending a, a fresh fire to ignite you again I, I'm reminded of how the apostles Apostles prayed for boldness, for boldness, and God gave them another dimension of boldness. Tell your neighbor, say, there's levels to this. Uh, I sense the Holy Ghost in here. My God, I want you right now to go ahead and take out time to invite friends and family. You need to be a part of this. Your leadership needs to be a part of this. Your senior leaders need to be a part of this. I know we have leaders all across the nation as we are bringing together three nations, the nation of Kenya. We're bringing together South Africa. We're bringing together the U.S. But I want you to connect and go ahead and share it with your friends in Canada. Share it with your friends in America. Share it with your friends all across the nation. Some of you are connected with leaders in India, and they need to hear this. All of the KRGA leaders, I need you to support this broadcast and I need you to be in position and I need you to invite your leadership team. Go ahead and invite them. Let them know you don't want to miss this. 
welcome once again. Please take out time to share this broadcast. Take out time right now. As we get ready to move forward, I want you to share this broadcast. I believe it's important. I believe we're in strategic times. And I believe that God is raising up voices. He's already raised up voices, voices that were prepared behind the scenes. And God is shifting them to the forefront for such a time as this. So please share it with everyone that you know. And we are graced today with the powerhouses to be able to be a part of this great meeting that we're doing here through virtual Apostolic Fire Leadership Summit. It is our first summit. We're going to be doing more of this. God is shifting me, showing me either you can result to the past or you can pioneer in the future or pioneer in the future. We have two types of people in this time, people that are resulting back to what was and people that have eyes to see of what's to come and what is. And so once again, we're graced with powerhouse houses to join us with this Apostolic Fire Leadership Summit, starting today with Apasa Hadassah Esther of Kenya, who you will hear in just a little bit. And we thank God for her and a good friend of mine out of South Africa, Apostle Neil Rethby. We thank God for him as well. The summit consists of three free sessions. There's three free sessions via our Facebook pages. You can find them on different Facebook pages that we have, Ron Tolliver 2, Ron Tolliver, the main page, Apostle Ron Tolliver, A-R-T. You can find it also on Apostolic, Apostolic Fire Leadership Summit. You'll find it in the event page there. Definitely pay attention to the dates that are coming up. These three sessions are free sessions. They are the pre-summit sessions. These are free. There is no cost to be able to tune in to these. And today, Apostle Esther Hadassah will be sharing. She will be our first speaker. August 20th, we will have Apostle Nia Rathby. That's August 20th. I feel like I got an international swag, swag to my voice today a little bit. I, I, I think it's there. August 20th, we're going to be with Apostle Neil Rathby. And that will be at noon. And then you'll have me on September 23rd sharing at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Take note of those dates. Once again, August 20th, Apostle Neil Rothaby out of South Africa will be our speaker. And September 23rd, you will hear from me at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. These are followed by our official training sessions via Zoom on October 1st from 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. And you can register that October 1st training. It is registration only. So feel free to register. I know we have a lot of international guests, so we do have where you can register internationally as well as locally. We want you to visit Eventbrite to register for the training. Now, once again, that is Eventbrite. We're going to once again post the, we're going to post everything within the comment bar. So take a look there. Okay. You'll be able to access that for your tickets. OK, that's what we have going. So make sure that you have those dates, August 20th, September 23rd and October 1st for the official training. I'm excited tonight. I'm excited tonight. And those of you that know me, I don't like wasting time on preliminary things. I don't like wasting time. The fire is burning. I sense the Holy Spirit already at work within us. I want to be led by the spirit. And so the next voice you're going to hear will be Apostle Esther Hadassah. Amen. We're going to have a short video of her bio. We're going to share that, and then we're going to move into her speaking. So blessings to you. Once again, salute to everyone that's on the line. Continue to invite, continue to share. Bless you. Hadassah Esther is a well-known apostolic and prophetic voice in Kenya and across the nations. A woman of God who openly shows her love for many, and for the Holy Spirit, she is a woman of God with a distinct mantle of influence in this generation. Apostle Hadassah is the founder of the Spirit Hub, an apostolic conversion of believers, where she is mentoring, equipping, raising up, and imparting many into their destinies and guiding them to walk as spirit-led men. She has been called to stir up the hearts to the truth of the kingdom and carries a rich revelatory and intercessory unction. Hadassah also founded CLAP, Christ Loves All People whose main mandate is evangelism through compassion towards the less fortunate. It has been resourceful in feeding the needy and touching them through the gospel of giving and was very impactful during the COVID lockdown season 
as they reach many needy families through weekly donations and roadside healing crusades. Her greatest passion is to see many walk in kingdom realities as well as walk in the liberty of the spirit. She has traveled many countries and ministered in various states as well as hosted many revival gatherings in her hometown, Nairobi, and abroad by consistently being a voice of hope, a young, elegant, and passionate preacher and mentor to many across the nations. Through her social media platforms, Hadassah has impacted many in Kenya. Hadassah is also an author, entrepreneur, and most significantly, a single mother to her two adorable children, a seven-year-old son and three-year-old daughter. God's apostolic fire bearer for this hour, Hadassah Esther. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. It is wonderful to have you all on board this uh, evening in Kenya. And, uh, you know, uh, wherever you're logging in from, whether it's from America or from Europe, it's a wonderful opportunity. Thank you so, so much, Apostle Ron Tolliver. It's such an honor, it's such a humbling moment to be able to connect with you like this. Uh, I feel so privileged to be able to minister with you via this platform today. What a wonderful God he is, for he has made this opportunity possible. And I also want to appreciate Apostle Rateba from South Africa, though I haven't met him, but I'm sure that God is doing a great work through you. Apostle Ron Tolliver, I honor the grace of God upon your life, and I definitely respect the fact that you have been in this system. You understand many deep things concerning leadership, and you are a voice in this generation. I love you, and I honor you, sir, together with your wonderful team at KRGA. God bless you so much for this wonderful work that you have put together for this hour. Beloved, if you're joining us from other parts of the world, leaders, our apostles, prophets, and MAGA leaders, corporate leaders, I want to say that I celebrate you all. I honor the work that you're doing in the vineyard, and I appreciate you. May the Lord continue refreshing you even as you serve. This conference is not just for apostles and leaders and prophets and pastors. This conference is for every child of God. I've been speaking to my team and I've been telling them that if you're a child of God, you are called as a leader. You are the head and not the tail. And therefore you must be present in places where they are talking about leadership. We have got to lead. We have got to dominate. God did not put us in the earth to be dominated but he put us in the earth to dominate. And that's why it's such powerful summit, such powerful conferences are very useful for us. We are not wasting time here. We are here to glean. We are here to listen. We are here to hear a word from God. We are here to hear a now word from the throne room. And there is going to be a sound from heaven for those who are attentive, those who are expectant. We've been praying together with my team. We've been holding gatherings in the night time to just intercede for this. And so I believe that God has has already gone ahead of us and that our expectation shall not be cut short. God is going to do a mighty thing in this place. So once again, you are most welcome. Take time to share out this broadcast with your family, with your friends. Somebody's life is about to be impacted in a way like never before. Tonight, I'm going to go straight into the word of God because of time. We don't have all the time and we want to thank God because he has allowed that we can meet virtually, even though COVID came and sort of knocked us down and tried to shut us off. God has been so merciful to us. God has been faithful. And he has even opened up more avenues for us to be able to connect globally online. And so it doesn't matter where you are. We are in one place. In the spirit, there is no distance. So tonight, there is a word 
from heaven for somebody. It's going to be a word that will help somebody move from one point to another. It's going to be a word that will transform you. It's going to be a word that should activate you to know that God is calling you into certain things at this time. God does not want you to be stagnated. God does not want you to be caught up in the old. It's not time for the old wine. It's time for the new wine. And those who can perceive, those who are like the sons of Issachar, can understand that there is a shifting in the atmosphere because of what God wants to do. God is calling you to be a pioneer. God is calling you to be a forerunner. God is calling you to take the front seat. God does not want any spectators anymore. God wants some mighty participators in the kingdom. God wants some mighty participators in the kingdom. The word I'm sharing today is destiny coalition. Destiny coalition. What is destiny coalition? Why am I talking about destiny coalition? As I sat and waited on the Lord, there is something that I felt was welling up in my spirit concerning today. And I was such a and searching and asking God, what am I going to talk about, Lord? This is an international opening. This is an international portal. But what do you want for me to speak to your people? And the Lord reminded me of what I have been doing in this season, which is called midwifing. I have been gathering saints, and we have been praying in the midnight hour in something called the midnight midwife. And we've seen God do great things. We've seen God do a great work in the midst of those who have sacrificed their sleep. Testimonies have been overflowing and I know that from, from where we are right now, the future is great. The future of the people of God is great. And by the reason of the midwifing season, God began to put it in my spirit that I want you to talk about something that is in relation to the midwifing so that my people will ascend higher, so that my people will come up higher, so that my people will be hazo, catalamano, seize the moment, so that my people will begin to run with speed. Guys, I said it on Facebook the other day, it is a destiny, reconstructive moment. What God is doing right now is reconstructing destinies of his faithful ones because you cannot afraid to, you cannot afford to lose the season the bible says in the book of ecclesiastes 9 11 i believe the time and chance happen to them all so when god gives you a chance you better maximize the opportunity beloved i'm here to remind you prophetically timing is key everything depends on time if you move according to the shape of heaven, you will enter into the places that are preordained for you. But if you dilly dally, if you shuffle your feet, if you hesitate, then you might miss on the window of grace that is opened up for you. And so tonight, I'm going to be speaking of destiny coalition. What is coalition? What is a coalition? A coalition is an amalgamation. A coalition is a cooperation. Cooperation means to operate together. Cooperation, operate together. A coalition is an alliance. A coalition is a partnership. A coalition is co-laboring. A coalition is to coming together to do something for their benefit. A coalition is a league. A coalition is an and taunt. When I say non taunt, it means some, something that is, is, is creatively put together to cause a shift by two coming together. A coalition is unity where there is no division, but there is oneness in the spirit. Beloved, as the body of Christ and as leaders all over, there is something demonic that has been happening in our minister. And what I call demonic here is the workings of the spirit of division. So many of us have 
have been caught in battles that have come as a result of a spirit of division. And let me tell you, beloved, there is nowhere we are going if we cannot come together. A coalition is teamwork. When you look at the Greek word, Greek word collaboration, we see it's synergia. When we talk about synergia, we talk about synergy. The Lord is talking to somebody tonight and he's saying, you need to synergize. You need to form that team. You need to come into that partnership. The Bible says five of you will chase a hundred and you will chase ten, and a hundred will chase ten thousand and your enemies will fall by the sword. That's Leviticus 26 verse 8. Imagine that if you came together you can destroy the kingdoms of darkness and the kingdom of God shall become the main kingdom. Imagine if we walk together the weapons formed by the enemy shall not be able to stand according to this verse. It says you shall destroy your enemies and they shall fall by the sword. We are supposed to be a united house and not a divided house. Remember what the Bible says. A kingdom divided cannot stand at all. And the kingdom has been divided. We haven't seen unities in the body. We haven't seen people coming to work together for the common good of the kingdom because it has been such a demonic spirit that has caused scattering when they should be gathering. The Bible also says in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9 to 12 that two are better than one. Two is better than one. And what does it mean? When we read this whole scripture it says two is better than one because they have a good return for their labor. Remember that a good return for their labor. It says if either of them falls, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep each other warm. But how can keep one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three stands is not quickly broken. Beloved, what this scripture is saying that there is a power in two. There is a power in the duo. There is a power in coalition. There is a power in partnership. There is a power in coming together and twinning. There is a power. And what does that power bring about? The first thing it does is that it brings a good return. That's what the Bible says. It brings a good profit. It brings a return on investment. ROI. And one of the most important things is that it brings about wealth. Remember, they say your network is your net worth. So if you've got a strong network, then we can easily count your net worth and say it stands as this. The Bible has clearly said the words of King Solomon that it brings a good return. So if you want to see a good return, somebody I'm speaking to you tonight. You must realize the power of partnership. You must realize the power of coming together. You must realize the power of moving as a collaboration. You must realize the power of rising people that will stand with you as a team. You can't stand alone. You need somebody to push you there. You know, the Bible says that, that, that whatever God needs to be done, God started with a formula of two. Tonight, I'm going to move through this very quickly but I keep on saying this that the most powerful thing God ever did was to give us a template and this was the template of two. He showed us how principle, he showed us the principle of two when he said, when he said in the book of Genesis 2.18 God looked around and when he surveyed everything, God looked around and when he checked out the whole thing, he said it in the book of Genesis 2, 18. It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him an helpmate. I will make him an helpmate. It is not good for you to be alone. It is not good for you, sister, to be alone. God saw it that we will need to couple together. God saw it that 
that marriage was important and I'm announcing to somebody tonight that you need that partner you need to be settled down in marriage there is power in a marriage marriage is one of the most powerful institutions marriage is necessary God brought about the power of two because he wanted something very powerful to happen if you will read with me Genesis Genesis 1 27 to 28 Genesis 1 27 to 28 you will see a divine secret there about what God meant Genesis 1 27 to 28 and what does it say what does it say say so God created man in his own image in the image of God, he created him. Male and female. Male and female. He created them. Male and female. He created them. Listen to me clearly. He said male and female. He had to bring about two. He knew he couldn't do one. He needed a duo. So he said male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them and said, what did God say? Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the face of the earth. God gave them a rule. He said, go and subdue. But how were they supposed to do it? They could not do it if they did not go back to the template of two. God, the owner of the universe, sees the problem of solo and introduces duo. When we go further into Genesis 2, 18, we are going to see why God really needed this uh, Genesis 2, 18. Genesis, uh, I mean, Genesis 1, 28 was a revelation. But how does this revelation and how does this command come to be? God says, go to Genesis 2, 18 and see. I'm going to read Genesis 2, 18. And the Bible says, and the Lord said, it is not good that man should be alone. Man had already been given the instruction to dominate. But man at that point was just one. God had formed a man and within the man, he had put the duo nature. The second person had not yet manifested. And we see that in the book of Genesis 2.18, God sees this man and realizes because I am God and I've put everything in this man, everything that this man needs is within him. I am going to start bringing it out one by one. And so what does God do? God makes the man to lie down and God uses the rib of the man and brings out the partner of the man. If God knew that man could not survive solo, you cannot survive solo. Somebody, I'm here to prophesy to you. It is your season that God is going to pair you with your destiny partner. It is your season that God is going to pair you with your destiny helper. It is your season that God is going to pair you with your business partner. Partnership is powerful if it is done the God way. So God looks and sees there is a problem and God solves the problem. And he gives us a template, a powerful template. Because in Genesis 1.18, he had said, be fruitful and multiply multiply. But in Genesis 2, 18, he says, it's not good for you to be alone. Let me give you somebody else that will help you to dominate, that will help you to dominate, that will help you to do better, that will help you to keep warm. And so Genesis 2, 18 connects with Ecclesiastes 4, 19, the words of King Solomon. And so God does that. He has establishes the power of two. He establishes the power of two. And somebody tonight, I pray that you catch this revelation. You need to understand the power of two. When then later on we see God speaks to Noah in Genesis 6, 19. And he says to Noah, and of 
every living thing of all flesh, you shall bring two of every kind into the ark to keep them alive. God is speaking to one man, Noah, and he tells Noah, there is going to be a problem. But when this problem comes about, I am asking you to build this ark. But within this ark, you must bring two of every living creature, two of every kind. You must bring them. And what does it say in the Bible? It says, bring two of every kind into the ark to keep them alive. Somebody say to keep them alive, to keep them alive, to keep them alive. What is God saying in other words? God is saying to preserve. I want to preserve mankind. I want to preserve your generation. I want to preserve your family. I want to preserve your business. I want to preserve your marriage. I want to preserve humanity. I want to preserve the youth. I want to preserve your children. So what does God say? Bring two of every kind because it is only by the power of two that we enter what we spiritually call bathing what we physically call bathing bathing preservation cannot happen unless there's been a bathing preservation cannot happen unless somebody goes ahead and obeys genesis 1 18 which says be fruitful and multiply multiplication only begins to happen when the template of two is employed if you want to see multiplication in your ministry if you want to see multiplication in your business if you want to see multiplication in your marriage, you must go back to the original template. You must go back to the book of our genetics, Genesis, and you see how God did it. You cannot multiply unless there is two of you. If you want to see your ministry growing stronger, then you must look for healthy team players. You must look for healthy collaborations. You must look for like-minded people. People. You must look uh, for partners that mean well. You must look uh, for people that are equally yoked. You must look uh, for those that carry the same value and the same belief. If you must marry, you cannot just marry anybody. You must look uh, for that partner that is going in the same direction. You must look for that partner who believes in multiplication. God did not put us on the earth to remain solo. He did not put us on the earth so that we could die and leave no inheritance. He put us on the earth that posterity would be maintained. He put us in the earth so that they would be a heritage. He put us in the earth so that there would be legacies left behind. Somebody, I'm speaking to you. You gotta leave a legacy. But how do you leave a legacy if you don't understand the power of two? You've got to come to Together with a woman, you gotta come together with a man. Some of you are very late for your divine marriages because you are choosing carnally. You did not choose with the eyes of God, and so you missed your time. According to Ecclesiastes 9, you missed your time. You did not design that this was the man. This was the woman that God was bringing into my life to preserve, to preserve the seed that I'm carrying to preserve the seed that is within me. You didn't understand. You went and met with a seed destroyer. You went and met with somebody that is a weed and you see weed will grow alongside the wheat. You did not meet the wheat. You met the weed and God is calling you out of that. He is saying tonight, I am bringing you out of every unequal yoke. I am bringing you out of that relationship that was not God ordained because when it is God ordained there are some things that begin to happen let us go and read the story of Ruth we don't have to open up right now but I'm sure all all of you have read about Ruth and what Ruth did. Ruth gives us a confirmation of the power of two. Ruth decides, I am going to cling on Naomi. Naomi is going to be my partner. I have no husband. I have no brother here. But as I look at Naomi, I don't just see a mother-in-law. I don't see a woman that has lost everything. I see a destiny coalition. 
I see a destiny partner. I see somebody that can take me into destiny. And so one season, one season of cooperation with Naomi, one season of cooperation with Naomi leads to the next season of divine connection for Ruth. It is out of cooperating, cooperating with Naomi that Ruth is ushered into her next season of meeting Boaz and we see that out of this Boaz connection, what happens? There is a bathing. That same thing that God has been speaking about, there is a bathing. And this bathing is the one that now preserves Naomi. Naomi would have died a very, very hopeless woman if it were not for the obedience of Ruth, if it was not for the clinging and the insistence of Ruth. Naomi would never have seen a grandchild. So Ruth comes in to end the generational curse. Somebody I am declaring, God is connecting you to somebody that will help you break the generational curse that is in your family. Ruth is the one that breaks the generational curse of barrenness. Naomi was never going to see a grandchild. She was never, she had sons, but there were no grandchildren. And God positions Ruth there so that through Ruth, Naomi would see grandchildren and not just that but Ruth now enters into the book of records she is right in the root in the root of the genealogy of Christ what am I saying somebody you need your Naomi you need to earmark them you need to know who is this that is my destiny partner you might not be looking out for a marriage partner but you might be looking for somebody that can be of help in your destiny it might might not be a marriage partner for somebody, but it might be a ministry partner. It might be a business partner. It might be a partner in that organization. It might be a prayer partner. It might be one that pushes you in prayer. It might be your accountability partner. It might not be your marriage partner, but it could be your accountability partner. Naomi was one that was very categorical when she gave Ruth instructions. Somebody I'm speaking to you tonight. God is sending you somewhere where you will have to connect with this kind of spirit. And Naomi spirit. It's not somebody you like. It's not somebody you admire. It's not somebody that is like this or like that. But it's somebody who can lead you to your next season. Those are the kind of seasonal, seasonal partnerships that many need to get into right now. Stop complaining about how your mentor looks like. Stop complaining about how your pastor looks like. Stop complaining about their this and their that. Stop looking at the shortcomings because many of the destiny partners, they will not look like what we want. Naomi did not look like what Ruth wants. Naomi had literally called herself Mara, which means bitterness. So you can imagine the kind of vibe Naomi had, bitter vibe, all the things that came out of her belly. Her belly did not flow with rivers of life, but rivers of bitterness. Somebody I prophesy to you, God is connecting you to a destiny partner in this season. If you have come over to listen, I declare that this is your word. There is going to be a business partner. There is going to be a destiny connection that shall manifest in the next couple of months. They don't have to be in your country because God is not limited by territories. God is able to locate you even through Facebook, through YouTube or whatever it is but you're coming into that season and your life is about to change Ruth helps us to see why too is so significant in the kingdom. The Bible says in Amos 3, 7, how can two walk together unless they are agreed? How can two walk together? You know, the problem we have, beloved, is that we walk with people that are not agreeing with us. We pray with people that are not agreeing with our prayers. We call certain people prayer partners, yet they are not prayer partners. We call certain people business partners, yet we carnally selected them. And that's where we are in 
in pain. Collaboration is important, but who you collaborate with is what is most important. Who you collaborate with, who you form that on taunt with, on taunt is spelled E N T E N T E on taunt. Who you form the on taunt with is what is important. You cannot connect to everybody. You gotta find your tribe. You gotta find those who flow with you. You gotta find those who are going in the same direction. I want to take you into a scripture that shows you why the tribe is important. You cannot afford to play around with this. If you go and bundle yourself in a place where you are not celebrated, in a place where they look down upon you, in a place where they despise you, you will not function. You will be choked and suffocated. And that which is within you, it shall not bloom, it shall die. And that's why it is important that when you enter the place of destiny connections, you must discern whether the other party is really for you and not for you. I'm sorry to say that some of you here, you went into marrying your enemies. You went into marrying destiny wasters, destiny abortions, you went in to marry a soul. Saul and David cannot marry each other. You cannot afford to do that. You need a Jonathan, not a soul. Some of you went ahead and you married your Haman. How does Mordecai settle with Haman? You went ahead and married somebody that is bent on destroying your destiny and you have cried. You have asked God many questions. You don't understand what to do because you went and married wrong. You went Went and started a business with somebody that is not from your tribe. You went and started a ministry with somebody that is not in your tribe. You went and started an organization with somebody that is not in your tribe. You called a big team of worship ministers to come into your church because they were good looking, because they sang with good voices, but they were not from your tribe. And the Bible categorically warns that if you marry out of your tribe, you will miss your inheritance. If you marry out of your tribe, you will compromise on your inheritance. Whom you marry spiritually is very important. Whom you come with together spiritually is very important. Let's read Leviticus 36 verse 6. Let's read Leviticus 36 verse 6. And we shall see what the Lord says about this spiritual tribe. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Maga robos kentaya. Zebra konto lebrozi kalabra shanda. Oh, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. So Leviticus 36 verse 6 says, This is what the Lord commands concerning the daughters of Zelophehad. The daughters of Zelophehad. You know these daughters. You know these daughters. And this is what the Lord said to them, saying, Let them marry whom they wish to marry. Let them marry who they think best to marry. But they may marry only within the family of their father's tribe. They can only marry within the family of their father's tribe. Beloved, this is not just to the daughters of Zelophehad. It is to all of us. God is giving us confines within which we can operate from as partners spiritually. They were told, marry whomsoever you wish to marry. Pick your choice, but your choice must remain within the spiritual confines of your tribe. You cannot move along with people who don't understand your spiritual love language. You cannot move along with people who don't design the things you design. You cannot move along with people who got strange beliefs. They don't believe in the manifestations of the spirit like you do. They don't believe in such things as fasting. They don't believe in the things God has taught you in the secret. When you're looking for a spiritual tribesmate, you must look for people that 
fall within the confines of those of your father's house and the daughters of Zelophehad. They married from the tribe of Manasseh. They did not go away from that. They stayed within the confines because they did not want to lose their inheritance. Somebody I'm speaking to you tonight. The reason you have lost time, the reason you have lost resources, the reason you have lost divine helpers, the reason you have lost favor is because you went out of the confines of the Holy Spirit. You went out of the confines of your spiritual tribe. You cannot afford to be in two tribes at the same time. You gotta choose who's good for you and stick to them. But these are things that happen only by discernment. It is for those who can design. I was having a conversation with somebody this afternoon and I say to them, the reason we get into many mazes as children of God is not because God does not send a warning. It's not because God does not speak to us, but it is because most time we ignore the warnings of God. Many of those that have ended up in bad marriages or in bad partnerships or in, in, in spiritual divisions is because they ignore the voice of the Holy Spirit concerning the specific instructions. The daughters of Zelophehad were given very specific instructions. It's God that spoke these instructions and instructions are necessary. You cannot move with a prophet if you fail to keep instructions. You cannot move with an apostle if you cannot manage instructions. You need to be a person that follows the instruction of God. We have come into a season where I believe there is a resurgence of divine collaborations. There is a resurgence of divine partnerships. There is a resurgence of divine alliances, divine connections that cut across the globe. Some people are moving from local and they are becoming local. Some people are moving from the village and they are becoming national. Some people are moving from their small cities and small towns and God is raising them as global voices. But how is this going to happen when you listen to the instructions of God and find your connections ah, within the confines of your spiritual tribe. Don't go and marry people who tell you it is okay to fornicate. There is no problem with drinking once in a while. There is no problem with going out to party once in a while. You are already out of your confines. If you've got to keep yourself pure, you've got to remember Light has got no business with darkness. Belial has got no business with Christ. You cannot afford to compromise on your righteousness because you are chasing for some dollar. If your dollar is going to make you compromise on the spirit, you gotta stop and think because once you compromise with the dollar tribe, you might lose on your inheritance. If you're chasing for that business and it's is going to make you compromise. I'm here to announce to you, there is a whole inheritance. Don't settle for what is not for you because God knows exactly what you need for this season. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to take you into a very interesting thing. I want to take you into a very interesting thing. The Bible, you know, when you look at the business of God, when you look at God's work, when you look at the kingdom, the kingdom work is too large. The kingdom work is too complex. The kingdom work is too vast, too vast, too big to be accomplished without collaborations. Because of the multiple graces that God has poured on his sons and daughters, there is diverse graces, there is diverse giftings, there is a lot of work to be accomplished. There is Asia, there is Australia, there is America, there is the United Kingdom, there is Africa, there is the UAE, there is so many places that still need you and I to go to because he says, occupy till I come occupy till I come, but he gives us a condition. He said these things will have, you will have to go to the end of the earth to fulfill some of these things. Go till the end of the earth to fulfill the great commission. Go till the end of the earth and occupy until all kingdoms are 
subdued under my kingdom. But you know what, beloved? The Bible says because of the complexity, the, because of the largeness of the kingdom, because of all the work that can that has to be done, we cannot fail to compromise on collaboration. Any, there is no way God is going to use one particular vessel to do all his work on the earth. God cannot use one jar of clay to fulfill his agenda in the earth. God needs people to stand with Jeremiah. God needs the Aaron and who to stand with Moses. God needs Mordecai to stand with Esther. You need to realize the power of this. God does not expect you to go in alone. When Daniel goes in, he needs Meshach. He needs Abednego. He needs them. He can go before the king Scots alone. There is something about healthy collaborations. They will keep you. They will, there's an African saying that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go with people. If you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go with people. It is people who will hold your hands up when you're fainting. It is people who will encourage you when you are discouraged. It is people that you will have a shoulder to lean on when everything is crumbling. The Bible has already said it in Ecclesiastes 4.19. Two is better than one. You need a partner to keep you warm. Praise God, praise God. Speak to you and say, things are about to change. Hallelujah. We lost you there for a moment, but you're back on. Hallelujah. There is a level of success. There is a level of altitude. There is a level of height that you cannot reach if you don't have people that hold your hands up, people who encourage you, people who clean up your shoes. When I was preparing for this meeting, I had a whole team of people here helping me to prepare. I had my intercessors. I had people making meals for my children. I had somebody doing my hair. I had somebody doing my makeup. I had some other people looking at how to set up the laptops and all the gadgets so that they can work flawlessly. And it shows you that teamwork is inevitable. Teamwork is inevitable. I want to show you something that comes against kingdom assignments. I want to show you something that comes against collaborations and it's a destroyer. I want to show you something that has interfered in the purse with the work of God and with the advancement in the kingdom. I want to take you into a world that will open your eyes to see that it is possible that God can position people together. But if we allow ego, if we allow attitude, if we allow pride, if we allow hypocrisy, if we allow jealousies and envy, if we allow anger and things like that, we will interfere with divine assignment. There are people God is calling today and he's saying, you have been separated from those that were important. You have been separated from those who would help you to go forward. You have been separated from your Aaron on Hur. You have been separated from your Mordecai and God is saying tonight uh, is your opportunity to repent. Uh, repent doesn't mean sorry. Repent means change your mind about that person. Change your mind about that leader. Change your mind about that lady. Change your mind about that man. Change your mind about that person that somebody came and they slandered them they told you things that were not correct you know this is the thing that is destroying many of the divine partnerships god will bring people together but as usual the devil will come to scatter what god has gathered and so we got to be discerning. We got to be people who relentlessly pray the bible says in the book of luke 1 Men ought to pray and not to faint. You have got to pray for your collaborations. You have got to pray for your divine connections. You have got to pray for your business partner. You have got to pray for that person in your life that you believe God has strategically positioned to make you enter destiny. You have got to pray for your Naomi. Somebody open with me the book of Acts chapter 15 from verse 30 to 41, Acts 15, chapter 30. 
Acts 15, verse 30 to 41. I want to read it for you. And before I read this verse, Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul is one who understood the power of collaborations. One time in Acts 9, Apostle Paul was facing difficulty in the ministry. Apostle Paul was being resisted by brothers. He was being resisted by many and something powerful happened. God sent one man, Barnabas, and Barnabas was one who helped Apostle Paul to, to deal with the resistance. This is, I'm reading from Acts 9 before I go to Acts 15. Uh, it, it's, it's, let me just read it so that you can see it clearly. Acts 9, Acts 9 from verse 26 to 27. You need to see something special about divine collaborations. So the Bible says in Acts 9 from verse 26 and when Saul had come to Jerusalem he tried to join their disciples but they were all afraid of him and did not believe that he was a disciple they did not believe that he was a disciple but Barnabas but Barnabas listen there is a but there is a conjunction but Barnabas took him Barnabas took Paul Barnabas saw the resistance Barnabas saw what Paul was going through Barnabas had designed that Paul is a true apostle. But Nabas had decided that this man is carrying a grace. But Nabas had designed that this man is a carrier of glory. But he's being resisted. And so what does Barnabas say? Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. He took him and brought him to the apostles. And he declared to them how he had seen the Lord on the road. And that he had spoken to him. And how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. So Barnabas comes in as a vindicator. But Nabas comes in to defend Paul. Remember Ecclesiastes 4.19. It says that two are better than one. Because if one is down, if one is overpowered, the other can defend. The other can defend him. So Barnabas comes in as our defender. Barnabas comes in to speak good on behalf of Paul. And somebody, I declare, you need our Barnabas. You need somebody God will use to come and vindicate you. You have been dealing with accusers. You have been dealing with slanderers. You have been dealing with gossipers. You have been dealing with people who want to spoil your reputation. You have been dealing with people that are trying to kill your ministry. They don't want your ministry to stand. They don't. Ooh we fire, fire, fire. We rebuke the enemy now in the name of Jesus. Zayanda, that the, 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 the Lord will send you a vindicator. God will send you somebody like Barnabas that will pacify the situation, that will speak well of you. This is a positive advertiser. Barnabas is one that comes to silence the negative broadcasters and he speaks well of you. I prophesy into somebody's life. You are about to meet a man like Barnabas. You are about to meet a woman with the spirit of Barnabas. You are about to meet somebody that is going to make your life better. You are about to meet somebody that will speak well of you in those places where your reputation has been dented. I prophesy into your life. You are coming into that season. But now look at Acts 15. As we are winding up, look at Acts 15 and see. Yes, look at Acts 15 and see what is happening. Acts 15, we are going to read together. So Acts 15 gives us a small excerpt of what is happening in, 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 in Judea. There is, some, there is some, some mischief. There is some disagreements. There is some conflict over, over the circumcision and, or, and under the, the same conflicts we are dealing with. The, the ones where people say, you, you know, you don't look holy you, you don't look righteous enough you know you know with all that that you put on your face are you sure you got the holy ghost in you you know we, we are in such a season we are in such a time in the same same time when there are conflicts over the circumcision conflicts over your heart people don't seem to design that you're really a child of god people have put you off because of your outward look they don't know that inside of you christ liveth the bible says it is not me that lives but it is christ that liveth in me and all is gone then you 
has come. People seem to be mixing up the old and the new. You know, this is this is what Paul went through when Barnabas came through for him. He went through the old season trying to come into his new season. Somebody I prophesy to you, your old season, the things that were sort of snares in your old season, they will not come to destroy your new season. They will not come to stop the blessings of your new season. I decree and declare what is in the old stays in the old unless God wants to use it for his glory because the Bible says in the book of Romans that all things work for good for those all things work for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose so nobody's gonna spoil your name nobody's gonna try to destroy you nobody's gonna destroy your marriage nobody's gonna try to destroy your business your children you are your 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 your, 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 your ministry because of your old season we decree and declare the good of your old season God is turning it all around so that he can use it in your new season everything that the devil thought he had used to set you up in your past season God is going to turn it around and he's going to use it for your good I prophesy to somebody you thought your old season was going to be off the record but I'm about to surprise you God is about to turn it around and use it for your good God is about to use every hurdle every tear every pain every snare every trap every mess God is about to put it all together and use it for your good because you're his faithful child God does not waste any season because the Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes 3 there is a season for everything under the sun and nothing is new so what you went through does not come as a surprise for God. God allowed it because of where God is taking you. Your old season was shaping your new season. Your old season was shaping your now. Your old season was building you for your now. Use all the bricks of your old season to begin to build your new season. Somebody I prophesy, you're coming into that Nehemiah moment and the devil will not stop you. Sanballat and Tobiah will not stop you. God is going to give you bricks and you're going to rebuild the wall that the enemy he thought he had brought down. God is about to give you bricks from your old season. God is applying your bricks so that you build a new wall that will a kamazo kun taraboza. He will give you bricks oh, to reinforce a new wall because you need a new wall in this new season. The enemy thought he put you down. The enemy thought he wasted you. The enemy thought he made you cry. But I'm about to talk to somebody tonight. God is about to use it all together for your good for your good somebody I want to say for my good it's coming together for my good your marriage it failed but it's coming together for your good your business crumbled but it's coming together for your good your name was London maligned but it's coming together for your good. Your ministry was almost suffocated. Your ministry was almost poisoned. But it's coming together for your good. It's coming together for your good. I'm here to prophesy for your good. I'm here to tell somebody, you're listening to me. You are listening to me. You're sitting there. You're shaking your head in disbelief. And you're saying, she talking to me. She talking to me. Yes, I'm talking to you. The Lord send me to tell you that it's coming together for your good. The man left you. The woman left you. But it it's coming together for your good. They left you. They deserted you. They talked about you. They walked out on you. But it's coming together for your good. Somebody open your mouth and say, for my good. Somebody I declare prophetically, I'm ushering you into your for my good season. The for my good season is going to be a for my good season. And you're going to see the good out of everything every pain. You're going to see the good out of every mess. You're going to see good out of every tear you cried. You're going to see the good out of every slander. You're going to see the good out of that barrenness. You're going to see the good out of that failed marriage. You're going to see the good out of that ministry in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So I'm going to read very quickly because I'm winding up. I'm winding up. So this is Apostle Paul 
in very good relationship with Barnabas. But when we read farther in verse 31, you go with me to verse 31, something interesting happens between Apostle Paul and Barnabas. Listen, the Bible says, when they had read it, they rejoiced over its encouragement. Now Judas and Silas themselves being prophets. Huh? Did you ever know Silas was a prophet? Silas was a prophet. He was not just an ordinary man. And many apostles, they worked with prophets. And so it says, and after they had stayed there for a time, they were sent back with greetings from brethren to the apostles. However, it seemed good to Silas to remain there. Paul and Barnabas also remained in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others. Number 36. Then after some days, Paul said to Barnabas, let us now go back and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of God and see how they are doing. Let us go back to those cities where we've been together, Barnabas. Let us go and see how these people are doing. Let's go check them out, you know. And, 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 and then now Barnabas was determined to take with him John called Mark, John Mark. Barnabas wanted to take John Mark, but Paul insisted that they should not take with them the one who had departed from them in Pamphylia. Paul was very concerned about John Mark's attitude. Paul knew John Mark has stood as once, he's gonna, stood, he's gonna stand up again twice. So I'm not taking John Mark with me, Barnabas. I'm not interested in taking this guy who is not here nor there. He's a bit wishy-washy, all right? And then the Bible says, then the contention became so sharp the contention, this is so important, verse 39, then the contention between Paul and Barnabas became so sharp that they departed from one another. Can you imagine? These were two collaborators, two partners that were working together in the past season, but their season had come to an end. Somebody, there is an end of season for you with some people. There is an end of season for you with some people. There is an end of season. I'm here to prophesy. God will allow it. The Bible says, and so Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus, but Paul chose Silas. Hallelujah. Paul chose Silas and departed, being commended by the brethren to the grace of God. And he went through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. So we see the end of an assignment between Paul and Silas. You've got to discern when it is end of season with certain people you have collaborated with. I needed to bring us to this point of the word so that we see sometimes God will allow that they talk. God will allow that they get angry. God will allow a misunderstanding because the assignments are moving in two different directions. Paul and Barnabas were no longer going in the same way. It had, might have been the will of God, but God allowed it. Barnabas went to Cyprus, but Paul and Silas went into other regions. And what happens in Acts 16, Acts 16, when you study the word, what happens in Acts 16 is what is so, it's God smacking. It's outstanding. It's amazing. It's tremendous to see that in Acts 16, after Paul and Silas are now knit together as a unit and they are moving together, something happens. Something happens to them. And this is what God is saying will happen when you disconnect yourself from the people whose season is over. Something will happen when Paul and Silas were arrested and they were in that prison and they were worshiping and praising and praying. There is an earthquake. Somebody, this was a powerful duo. This was a duo brought about by God. A powerful duo will always bring a shaking. A powerful duo will always shift the atmosphere. The Bible says in Acts 16 from verse 25, as they were worshiping God, there was an earthquake and the prison doors opened and there was a shaking and there was a rumbling and the prisoners heard and the warden was scared. It was crazy in there. The atmosphere had shifted. I'm prophesying to somebody when you meet your godly duo, when you meet your godly partner, when you meet that whom God is joining you to in this season, there is going to be a shaking and there's going to be a shifting. There's going to be a shaking and there's going to be a shifting. Every time God brings you to collaborate with somebody that is in the same mind.
agreed with you. Something powerful happens. For the Bible says, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I shall be. But those who are gathered in agreement are even more powerful because they cause a shaking. They cause prison doors to open. They cause men to submit to dominion. They cause chains to be broken. This is the kind that God is saying we must embrace in this hour. I am prophesying to somebody that we are resurgence of powerful collaborations between worship ministries and worship ministries, between apostles and apostles, between business leaders and business leaders. There is a powerful collaboration that is coming in terms of a marriage. Somebody I prophesy, you are entering into a marriage, a divinely ordained marriage, for there is something God wants to do through your marriage. Generational curses will end through you. You generational evil patterns will be destroyed through your marriage. I am announcing to somebody prophetically, God is positioning you with a Silas. You will need a Silas for this season. Silas saw that Apostle Paul was worthy of escorting. Silas saw that Apostle Paul was somebody that was serious about unity. Apostle Paul was not ready to go with John Mark because John Mark did not understand unity. He had stepped aside before and Apostle Paul did not want wishy-washy people in his team. And so Silas came as an amalgamation. I'm an announcing to somebody today, there is going to be an amalgamation. There is going to be a strong collaboration that is going to cause a shaking in your marriage, a shaking in your finances, a shaking in your career. Your career had sold. Your career was not moving. You have been stagnant like Paul was before, but never. You have been stagnant. There is no growth that is no going higher but i'm announcing tonight there is a holy alliance there is a divine alliance that is coming from your situation and your career is about to take shape god is going to position you with a head hunter with a hr director god is going to position you in a place where there is going to be a silas that will move you in the next direction I'm prophesying to somebody you have come into such a moment as this your Monica is going to push you up your Monica is going to help you position yourself he's going to say this is the place that you must hang out Esther and Esther you will hang out in that place and you will see divine results I'm announcing to somebody prophetic even as I close right now, two is better than one. So you are going to see labor. Your labor will be rewarded. There is a good return for your labor. Oh, as we have come together tonight, I'm announcing collaborations are about to explode in Europe in America. Collaborations are exploding in Kenya in America. Collaborations are exploding in Africa in Europe. Collaborations are exploding in Spain, in Brussels. Collaborations are exploding in South Africa, Zimbabwe, Zambia, Nigeria. Strong collaborations are coming. Strong collaborations are coming. Apostles, you're going to meet your prophet. Apostles, you're going to meet your prophet. Intercessors are coming together. And there is going to be an upper room experience. Intercessors, you're coming together. And there is going to be an explosion like Pentecost. Somebody join me as I pray. God is joining you to an investment. Somebody I speak tonight, you've got numerous ideas, but you do not know how you're going to move them forth. God is saying, I'm bringing investors. God is saying, I'm bringing the capital. God is saying, I'm bringing the man or woman that will lead you to your wealth. Relationships are equals to wealth. Your network is your network. Somebody I prophesy, God is causing your path to meet. With a person that will make you bath well. Yes, bathing, 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 bathing. As I prophesy now, somebody you're going to meet, the partner of your life that will cause you to birth. 
whether it's in business, you're going to bath because multiplication and fruitfulness must happen. Multiplication and fruitfulness must happen. So I'm declaring there is a convergence. I'm declaring there is collaborations. I'm declaring there is a new fire that is being bought. I'm declaring babies are being bought. Spiritual babies are being bought right now. Spiritual babies, ministries are being bought out of collaboration. I declare new moves of God, new moves of God. They are being bought out of the, this nation of Kenya. They're being bought out of America. Europe, they're being bought out of Africa, Zimbabwe, South Africa. New moves of God are being bought because of these collaborations. You're coming together with your destiny partner. There is a birthing, 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 there is a birthing of powerful worship teams, powerful worship ministry. There is a birthing, there is a birthing of even new platforms. Yes, God is going to give you strategic ideas, God is going to give you divine ideas. You're going to create platforms. Yes, you can create platforms, and those platforms will be used globally. I'm speaking to you, somebody right now. God is going to give you, you're going to receive divine downloads and you're going to create platforms and you're going to bath wealth. You're going to bath wealth, generational wealth. Your children shall not live in misery. Your children shall not live in poverty. Your children shall not beg or borrow. You shall be a lender to nations. You shall not be a slave to the borrower. I announced to somebody prophetically, the end of the dead season, the end of the dead season, the end of the dead season, the end of the dead season. The the season. You are coming out right now i separate you from debt you cannot be partners with debt i end that marriage with debt i end the marriage with debt yes debt d-e-b-t debt i end the marriage with debt i end the marriage with anything that is not of god tonight prophetically i issue that thing with a certificate of divorce that which is not of god that you have been married to that which is not of god that you have been connected to tonight i announce a complete separation a complete demarcation a complete demarcation you are totally separated from that which is of the old season you have come into a new wine season you have come into your new wine season oh makazon torobozi I am announcing a divine marriage. There is going to be a marriage. You are coming into deeper levels with the Holy Spirit. For the Bible says in John 14, 16, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper. That is the Holy Spirit. You are coming into a place of deep intimacy, deep intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Your time of prayer is shifting. Your time of worship is shifting. Your time of intimacy is shifting. You give him 10 minutes. You give him 15 minutes. But I'm announcing you're going to three hours. I'm announcing you're going to five hours. I'm announcing you're going to 10 hours. I'm announcing that you're going to give the Holy Spirit time. For he is your duo. You need the Holy Spirit more than you need a man. Blessed is the man who trusts the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. He shall be like a tree planted by the waters. I'm announcing you are converging once again with the Spirit of God. You're not going to be dry. You're coming into your oily season. You're coming into your oily season oh reka to robo zikayande imazo brende kablazo brikando isente kelebro mozianda you're coming into your oily season the hand of the lord is upon you because you've been slowed down in previous seasons you went with the wrong people you connected with the wrong tribe i decree and declare by the reason of this word May you receive back speed in your life. May you receive back speed in your life. Every area that the enemy made you slow down, every area that was invaded by a total spirit, a snail spirit, a sluggish spirit, I speak divine acceleration. Whoever you had connected to that was slowing you down, tonight we speak a complete separation. Some of you do not be surprised. It will happen physically. You shall see separations and you will know it is a Paul and Barnabas situation. It's not because you hate each other it's not because you 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 you're fighting it's not because of rivalry but god is saying it's not the season to go with this person any longer and then god is going to connect you to your silence because you need a silence in this season father i want to thank you because of this word i want to thank you for the people that are 
a blessing. I want to thank you because there are activations in the spirit right now. There is a movement, Lord. I want to thank you, Lord, because people are being disconnected from evil marriages. They're being disconnected. When I say evil marriages, I don't mean your marriage here on earth. I'm talking about whatever you had married in the spirit. You're being disconnected from that idol. You're being disconnected from that dollar mentality. You're being disconnected from that poverty mentality. You're being disconnected from that low self-esteem. You're being disconnected from that depression. Oh, the Lord is losing you right now. I command chains of breaking. Chains of depression, chains of discouragement are all breaking. By the reason of this word, I announce to you, somebody, you're coming out of the lethargy. You're coming out of the lethargy. You're coming out of your season of fatigue. I disconnect you from that season. I disconnect you from that sickness that had plagued your body. I announce to that disease, leave now in the name of Jesus. I break the the power of every sickness and every disease that has been married to your body, married to your flesh, I command it to leave you now. Every sickness, high blood pressure, cancer, whatever it calls itself, I announce to it tonight, you expire, you are cast in the name of Jesus. Oh, who are you? Oh, you mountain. Before the river bed, you become a plain. I announce to that sickness today, you cannot stay in that body any longer. The blood of Jesus is against you. Leave right now every dementia. Leave right now every dementia. Leave right now every diabetes. Leave right now every asthma. Leave right now every asthma. Leave right now every rhinitis. Every seasonal allergy. Leave in the name of Jesus. Every disease of the bones. Every disease of the nerves. Every disease of the spine. I cast them in the name of Jesus. And I declare by the reason of the blood of Jesus. Somebody is coming out of their sick season. Somebody is coming out of their bedridden season. Reason. Somebody is coming out of that hospital. Somebody is being disconnected uh, from permanent inhalers, uh, from permanent medication. I announce to every sickness that is afflicting you and your family, not today, not this season. I serve you a notice uh, and I command you now go. You have no power. Depression go you have no power dementia go you have no power schizophrenia go you have no power leave the people of God every excess weight that is bothering your body I speak to it right now obesity lose your hold and be gone every elevated sugar lose your hold and be gone in the name of Jesus Ba 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 shanda. Come on, let the people of God go in the name of Jesus, you have no power and you have no authority. And I speak tonight to that generational poverty, that lineage poverty. You have no power any longer. As I speak right now, I order you to pack out and leave. I declare a mindset shifter, a mindset shifter, a mindset shifter for somebody tonight. You are not going to stay there and pity yourself. You're going to move forward and make wealth. For God has given you the power to make wealth. Every lineage poverty, I curse you. I command you, leave their minds. Let go of their minds. These minds are renewed and they have the mind of Christ. They will prosper and they will do well. And they will move with speed. And they will execute their plans. In the mighty name of Jesus. I break the hold of stagnation. I command it to leave you. I break the hold of delay. You've been in one place for too long. You have been circling Mount Horeb, but enough is enough. You're moving out of that mountain today. Believe it and receive it. For the Lord is redirecting your steps. You've been wanting to do one thing, but you've not been able to do it. Why? Because you feel fearful. I declare the hold of fear is broken in the name of Jesus. No more limitations. Limitations because of trauma. We declare the portals of trauma. They are here in the name of Jesus. Limitations because of trauma. They are healed in the name of Jesus. Every trauma that flows in your bloodline. Every trauma because of your childhood. Every trauma because of the narcissistic marriage. Every trauma because of how you've been 
treated. We declare the trauma is healed in the name of Jesus. And tonight, you receive the power to advance. You will leap over a troop. You will leap over a troop. You will leap over a wall and go against the demonic troops in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare the captives of the mighty are loosed. According to Isaiah 49, 25, the captives of the mighty are set loose. You are no longer a captive. God is saying to somebody, I'm about to announce you in new places. I'm about to announce you in new platforms. I got your back. I took you through the rivers. I took you through the fires. But I got your back. Now I'm getting ready to announce you into new places. To announce you in new nations. To announce you in new cities. I'm about to make you do something that nobody in your family has ever done before the least is about to become the greatest reka to robo bobo zika mayande zebayando robo zika la bashanda or the holy ghost says to somebody i take your hand today and I usher you into your season of rest. I usher you into your season of rest. You have been ah, makazuka la bayanda. You have been oh, palpitating. You have been palpitating. I speak to that palpitation. Right now, be gone. Your heart has had those fluctuations. Right now, the heart is made still. In the name of Jesus. Somebody, I declare the chains are broken. The chains are broken. You are loosed from stagnation. You are loosed from rejection. You are loose from delay. You are loose from limitation. Oh, reka tarabo shanda. For some of you, I'm announcing you are coming into your Jephthah season. Somebody, you gotta read about Jephthah. You are coming into a Jephthah season where you are rejected by your own family but they're going to call you back and say come, come, we need you to lead us again you are coming into that season prophetically somebody here I'm announcing to you you are coming into your Joseph cup bearer season the cup bearer and Joseph that was a collaboration that was established right in the jailhouse and I'm announcing to you you are coming into that moment of Joseph and the cup bearer the cup bearer is going to speak about you the cup bearer is going to remember you the cup bearer is going to say yeah there is this person here oh Rabbi Zokoliba Shantoro Mosiah oh you're going to be spotted oh you're going to be advised oh you're going to be cancelled oh you're going to receive people from different nations oh your name is going to be on papers you never imagined you are coming into that season of divine alignment father i thank you and i bless you i thank you and i bless you spirit of the living god thank you thank you for your people for every person here every child every daughter of zion Every one of your sons, Lord, that has been in this broadcast listening to me and those that will listen after, Lord. Father, thank you because this word has come into their bones, into their bones. It will be like fire shut in their bones. And Lord is going to do something. It's moving them. It's changing them. And Lord, Father, it's for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Oh, God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the push today. We thank you for what you've done on this line today. We thank you for the lives that have been transformed and touched. We thank you for the mindset shift, God, of unity in the time of so much division. We thank you for pouring out your grace on the line today and for shifting your people back into the right posture for such a time as this. Lord, we speak life back unto her. God, strengthen her the more. We cancel the assignment of the enemy. We come against the attack of the enemy. We come against any backlash now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray for friends fire. God, we thank you for doors that shall open up across the nation. We thank you that lives uh, shall be transformed uh, by the pioneering anointing that you've given her. We thank you for the breakthrough, the miracles, the signs and wonders uh, that shall be the fruit of her apostolic mantle. We thank you today, God, for those that have received the word. We thank you for igniting fire in their belly. We thank you for an apostolic push. We thank you now, God, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we give you praise uh, and we give you glory hallelujah come on saints it's time it's time it's time i need every leader every krga leader at this particular time and all of those of you that have been blessed by the broadcast today i need you to give i need you to go ahead and prepare yourself 
to give today so that you can bless this woman of God. You see all of the work that she's doing. The work speaks for itself. I don't even have to be an advocate. But what I do need you to do is to go ahead and sow into this good ground. I need you to do that. And those of you that are international, you can you can go, go ahead and send your giving through SinWave, I believe it is. It is an app. We're going to go ahead and post that in the comment bar, and we need you to go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to post up some information to make that a little bit easier for you to give. If you are not international and you don't know how to do it that way, I'm going to go ahead and ask you to go ahead and prepare to give through Cash App. You'll be able to do that. The information is there. But what we're going to do is I'm going to make it a little bit more easier for you. For those of you that are international, go to Send Wave app. Download the app. Go ahead, and I want you to put in this information. Give me a moment. I'm working it out. Hallelujah. Thank God for technology. Thank God for technology. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that in here. Come on, don't you guys, don't you guys, don't you guys sit on this. She's been a blessing. Go ahead. You send it here. We're sending it to her. Make it a little bit easier for you to be able to sew here in the States. If you don't have time to download the Send Wave app, um, you can go ahead and sew here and we will make sure she gets it. Come on. you Don't you need more of this? Don't you need more of this? Don't you need more of this? Apostolic Fire Leadership Summit. This is only the beginning my God and my God, my God, I'm telling you, it was like Elijah on Mount Carmel. If there were any false prophets in the midst, they're burnt up now. If there were any false prophets in the midst, they, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, she didn't broke out the sword and start cutting heads off tonight. I'm excited about what God is doing. I'm excited. I'm excited. Come on. I need Amen. you to give. You can do that. Let's go ahead and Amen. give. Take your time and give. We need to go ahead. You can go do it right there. We want to bless the woman of God because we will be having her come back frequently. We want to definitely have you to do that. So take your time. We're going to put that information up one more time to make this easy for you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Amen. Shantari Babusi. 
Holy Spirit, baby, thank you for the Baba Shiki, baby. Oh, thank you, baby. Thank you, baby. Zokoli bara bara shamanda rabu saya zika bayan dogomos shika baba yan tomosa hallelujah amen thank you jesus thank you jesus hallelujah Jesus, Jika papa papa zika tu lu 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 lu, araba papa 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 shiki di 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 di, ika tu riyama zukuri ma, ika riyama ma zukuta ya, eke le 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 papa papa, makara papa papa zika ta ya, shete di di ka, shete di di, ida la 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 papa papa, apa zukutu riyama, apa papa zike ti, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Rabba Baba Shiki did it, Hallelujah, Rabba Baba Shiki did it, Mababa Baba Shada da 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 Every gift that has been sold, we hear it coming in. We thank God for your obedience. Mm-hmm. We pray a good measure, press down, mm-hmm. shaking together, and running over. See the cash app is going off. I hear it even as I'm praying. I speak open doors, divine collaborations, the mm-hmm. destiny helpers. We speak it in the name of Jesus, David and Jonathan relationships. We speak mm-hmm. it now in the name of Jesus, Timothy and Paulus mm-hmm. relationships. We speak now, Paul and mm-hmm. Priscilla relationships. We speak it now. In the name of Jesus, in the let it be your portion. 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 Hallelujah. We want you to tune in next month, August 20th. And even get ready to close here. We thank God for you. Amen. <laughs> I see the comments. We Amen. thank God for you. Thank you so much, Apostle, for all that you've poured out. For all that you've poured out, great woman of God. Thank God for our kingdom Amen. covenant relationship that I see God even forming the more. Even as you were speaking, I see what God is doing. And we have to be in tune with what God is doing. Jesus said, I only can do what I see my father doing. I don't want to conjure up nothing. I want to be in, I want to join God in what he's doing. I want to recognize his move and join in what he's doing. Amen. Amen. So salute to all of you. Amen. Thank you for t- tuning in. I see you. I see my team. I see those who help me. I thank God we have a, a lot of different people, graphic teams, as well as uh, administrators. We have people that are assisting, intercessors, people that are assisting. I don't always advertise and put you guys out there, but you know how important you are to myself and to KRGA. Salute to you. We love you. And at the end of the day, we give God glory. Salute to each Amen. one of you. And have a tremendous, tremendous rest of your weekend. Bless you. Amen. Bless you.